Welcome back my awesome phantoms. Phantom Ask here. I have another good collection of horror stories just for you. If you like this kind of content, subscribe and turn notification on. Don't forget to turn CC on to read along with the stories. Without further ado, let me creep you out. Story number one. Was watching a horror movie slash can't remember what one now, but it was a scene with lots of crows dying around a farmhouse, flying at the windows smacking into them and guess what the hell happened? A damn bird smacked into the window during that movie scene. I almost shit my pants and was covered in goosebumps. Story number two. It was January in Minnesota. There was about a foot of snow on the ground and my parents were out at a bar and my brother was at a friend's house but would come back later. I was in my living room watching TV and I heard a small knocking coming from the basement. So I walked down to investigate all over the basement to find nothing. Not thinking much of it I walked back upstairs to the living room to continue watching. About 5 minutes later I hear a loud crash from the basement and what sounded like a door opening. At this point I was pretty worried. I started to make my way down the stairs terrified and as I went down I thought maybe my brother was home without me knowing so I called his name. Nothing. I called again, and nothing so I kept slowly moving down the stairs only to find that there were drawers open and desks, boxes opened, and a few plastic bins and containers all knocked down and tipped over, but worst of all, my back glass door wide open with footprints leading out the door. I shut it, called my parents, and when they came, my mom called the police while my dad followed them. According to him, they went over my fence, and to the road behind my house where they stopped. My guess is he was picked up but we and the police never found out if it was planned or just a random house they picked to rob. Absolutely terrifying. Story number three. When I was a kid and my parents first started letting me stay at home by myself without a babysitter the large stereo we had in the finished part of our basement just turns on and starts blasting music. It was after midnight, the music was insanely loud so there was no ignoring it so eight or nine year old me had to go down into the basement, basement and turn it off. Everything you're not supposed to do in a horror movie I did and I survived, but every light in the house stayed on until my parents got home later that night. I still don't know why it turned on but I messed around with it a lot so I must have turned on some sort of alarm or timer or something earlier that day. That's what I'm choosing to believe anyway. Before we continue, I humbly ask you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Story number 4. I was watching TV on the couch with the dog around noon or so. Suddenly she perks up, the hair on her back stands on end, and she begins snarling at the corner of the room. This dog, who was a previous abuse victim and scared of her own shadow, hesitant to ever bark or attack, was in a position to lunge. Right at that moment I hear clear, defined footsteps walk from my roommate's room across the hall, right in my line of vision. No one is there, but I'm looking directly at the source of the sound. The dog is on the defensive, but her tail is tucked between her legs at the same time. Immediately following this the room got really cold for a few seconds and it took her a while to lay back down. Never had any other paranormal experiences in that house nor really ever in my life, the exception being a house I nannied in for a while, the sudden suddenness of it really freaked me out. Story number 5. All the doors in the apartment slammed shut at the same time. I took a walk around the neighborhood until my roommate got home. Story number 6. It was raining heavily outside. I was sitting on one of the chairs, looking out the window. And then suddenly, I heard something walking on the floor above me. I thought it was just a sound my mind was creating because yeah, I was already scared being all alone at home. So I ignored. About 5 minutes later, I hear someone knock on the window. I thought maybe it was a bird who hit the window or something. But then, suddenly, this huge floor lamp fell right on me. And I sat there for solid 10 minutes, trying to understand what exactly happened. The lamp was perfectly fine. I still don't understand how it fell. Definitely the creepiest alone moment of my life. Story number 7. One time when I was about 8, back when kids were allowed to run free range in our country neighborhood. I came back early from playing with some neighbors and went to sleep on the couch as I was tired from running rampant. 
My parents thought I was still at the neighbor's house so they left to go to the store. When I woke up, it was dark and the power had gone out. I climbed off the couch and started calling for my mom when I started hearing noises from the basement which I never went down to anyways because it scared the shit out of me at that age. It was a scratching noise, like something with claws was dragging against the concrete floor. Naturally I was scared shitless so I ran back to the couch, climbed into the hole underneath the cushions and waited until my parents got home. It only took them 20 minutes, but to an 8 year old scared of being eaten by some basement monster, it felt like hours. Story number 8 Was sitting in our living, living room watching TV one night and no one else was home. In the kitchen we have a refrigerator that has dual doors to open and a lot of decorations all over it including a small magnetic chime thingy. I'm sitting there when I hear the chimes ringing slightly so I mute the TV and listen thinking maybe a family member was home. Nothing happened so I turn the volume back up and keep watching TV. A minute later I hear what sounds like someone sneezing in our kitchen and it didn't sound like any of my family voices. I tensed up and thought someone had broken in our home. I'm shaking at this point but I'm being quiet and listening. A few moments go by and I hear the refrigerator doors open and then slam shut so hard I can hear glass jars inside it rattling. I ran in the kitchen ready to whoop someone's ass and there was nothing. I told my family about it and they said I was just paranoid, but we've had guests come over to the house and say it feels weird in there. Story number 9 I've had some woman walk up to my door when I was a kid at midnight and start screaming and knocking on my door. All of the doors were locked, but she eventually just lied down and fell asleep on my porch. Story number 10. I was home alone when I was like 9 or 10, whichever you are in 5th grade. It was literally the second day my mother allowed me to just walk home from school, rather than stay at daycare. Phone rings. Voice on the other end asks for David. I tell them sorry, wrong number. As a weird but relevant aside, we got constant wrong numbers when I was a kid because our home phone line was one digit off from H and our block tax prep service, so I had developed a sort of standard cadence to wrong number calls. It almost always went. H and R block? Sorry, wrong number. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'm on the line, waiting for him to say, oh, I'm sorry. Instead, he starts yelling, yelling that he needs to speak to David. He knows David is there. I tell him I have two Uncle Davids, but neither are there. The guy starts cursing and ranting and what, in hindsight, was pretty clearly driven by meth. So I'm already pretty spooked, having never really encountered a fully crazy person in my life, and then, he starts describing my house. He starts telling me that it's white with brick pillars on the green porch, red doors, and with a white dog in the backyard. He concludes the call with, I know you're lying, and I'm gonna come get your ass. In the next 30 seconds, I rush to get a knife in the kitchen, call my mom, and look frantically out the front of my house. Then there is a banging slash kicking at the door. I screamed at a pitch I didn't realize I could, and I ran into the bathroom, only locking door, and stayed there until my mom got home. When I heard the garage door open and my mom call out for me, I started sobbing and ran out to her, knife in hand. When I got older, I found out from my mom that the Uncle David the guy was looking for was a pretty bad drug addict for years, and that's why I hardly ever saw him. He probably gave someone he owed money to a bad address slash number. Thanks Uncle David. Story number 11. So was out of town on business, so I treated myself and ordered in from my favorite restaurant. Delivery guy arrived, and insisted he had to come into my place to deliver the food and take payment. I had to loudly refuse this multiple times, in the hopes a neighbor would he hear me, and he kept insisting. Finally got him to process my payment in the hallway, but he was muttering under his breath the whole time. Scared the hell out of me, I double locked the door when he left and sat up all night feeling uneasy. Wish I had reported him to the restaurant, but I was too shaken to think about it. Story number 12. I was home alone one night in middle school. I was in my room, which is right above our kitchen, watching TV. I had already
already shut all of the lights off downstairs, cause I was eventually going to fall asleep and didn't want to get yelled at for leaving the lights on. So I am laying in my bed the family dog, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, was lying next to me when I hear cabinet doors open and shut. It wasn't like they all opened at once and then shut, but more like one after another for a few seconds. I freeze and look at the dog, who at this point was an old lady, who perked up and looked at me. I peeked out my window that overlooks our driveway and didn't see anything. Now I didn't think anyone was in the house, because while the dog was lazy AF she was a great guard dog and she would have responded if the door opened or whatever. So after a few seconds the dog gets up and starts moving towards the stairs and I decide to follow fully confident that if anyone was down there she would scare them. I grab my softball bat and my cell phone and follow her downstairs. As we come downstairs I notice the lights are on in the kitchen and I dial 911 because I know I shut the lights off prior to going upstairs. When we get in the kitchen all the cabinet doors were open which was obviously not how I left it. That's when I noticed that the door was still locked so I thought whatever did this was still in the house. So I quickly ran upstairs to my parents closet and called my parents and told them what's up. up. They came home and obviously didn't find anyone or any trace of anyone being in the house. We still do not know why the light was on and cabinet doors were open, but we had some other paranormal-like occurrence happen around that time so we chalked it up to the household ghost. Story number 13. It was raining pretty hard one night and I was about to go to bed. Our dog decided to start going nuts barking at the corner of the family room. We had just moved in so there wasn't anything in there, but she just kept constantly barking at nothing. I tried to pull her away, but she wasn't having any of it. She started showing her teeth and snarling, which she never does. I figured there must be an animal outside so I turned on the deck lights, deck is off the family room, and peer outside. Nope, nothing. I wasn't about to go outside because of the rain and I didn't see anything anyway. So I dragged the dog to the bedroom, but she just won't shut up. Finally decide to get my shoes and umbrella on and walk around the house. Found one of my neighbors curled up along the side of the deck trying to protect himself from the rain. He's disabled and a little slow. He usually goes out for walks in the neighborhood. He got caught in the rain and couldn't find his house. If my dog hadn't gone nuts he might have been out there all night and who knows what could have happened. Story number 14. Two years ago, I get home from my last lecture from university before the start of Christmas break. My family had gone to Scotland for the weekend. I was all alone at home for the weekend. Once I arrived at home, I showered and was getting food ready. After eating, I turned on my PS4, plugged my headset and began playing. However, an hour later, I hear loud thudding from upstairs floor. Rather than being brave and checking upstairs, I ran to close and lock the living room doors to prevent a robber from entering. I hurried to my phone and called the poli police, who arrived quickly and began searching. After 20 minutes of searching, they found that someone had broken into my house, through my bedroom window. Luckily, no valuables had been taken. I did, however get a two-hour lecture from my parents on what precautions to take when home alone. Story number 15. Someone scoped out my apartment, charged up my stairs, and started banging on the door demanding I open it and talk to her. This chick would not give me a name or what she wanted. Finally threatened to call the cops and that's when she runs back down my stairs. Thank you for listening my phantoms. If you make it this far make sure to subscribe and turn notification on so you will be updated of my new uploads and check out our playlist for more terrifying stories. Share with a friend who might like this.